Hello, everyone. My name is Michael. I work for the San Francisco Public Library, and my co-host Kate is here as well, too. Hi. So today we're going to go over Google Maps. The agenda for today would be I'm going to go over what is Google Maps, how to access Google Maps on a PC, how to get directions, how to use the Street View option, how to find what is like around like a location. If you're planning to go somewhere, you might want to find like is there like certain stores or is there certain like businesses nearby? And but and I'm gonna go over Google Maps on a smartphone and tablet, which I'm gonna go over like basic navigation and how to use the offline maps option. So what is Google Maps? So Google Maps is an online like mapping platform. You can access this platform on a computer or on a smartphone or a tablet. If you're using a computer, you would just go to your favorite browser and you type in the URL address for Google Maps, which I'll show you later today, and you should get onto the platform. If you're using a smartphone or tablet, it depends on which uh, smartphone or tablet you have, you might have to download the app. And on Google Maps, you could view like satellite imagery, terrain view, street maps. Uh, for certain locations, you might see like 360 degree interactive like, panoramic views, you get to see like real time traffic conditions. You get to see like tr transit information as well too. And that of course you would need to have like active like internet connection. So if you're using uh, like your smartphone or tablet you have to have like Wi-Fi or data on your device. And also on, in Google maps, you could use it to, for like route planning. You could use it for planning your driving experiences, walking or biking. And there's like a lot more as well too. Okay, so accessing the Google Maps on a PC. So you would go to your favorite browser. You could use Chrome, Firefox, or any uh, other browser that you like. You would go to the address bar. You would type in google.com slash maps or maps.google.com. And there's like a couple of other ways of accessing Google Maps as well too, but these two are kind of like the easiest ways if you want to go to your browser. And no account is needed to access the platform on a PC. So if you just go to your browser, you type in any of these, you can use the platform. But if you do have an account, you have the option of kind of saving your settings. So you can save like favorite locations, you can save like favorite like the places. So there's kind of more ways of like kind of customizing your experience. And I'm gonna to go to my browser right now. Okay, so right now I'm in my browser. I typed in google.com slash maps. And this is where I'm at right now. So you'll see this on your screen and there's a lot going on here. So the first thing you should look for is on the top left-hand corner of your page right now. So in this section right here, you should see like kind of like a search box. It says search Google Maps, it's near the top. So this is where you will kind of enter in what you wanna look for. So if you wanna look for a specific business, you will enter the name right here. Or if you wanna look for a specific location, like with address, you enter the address right here as well too. And let's say if you don't know uh, where you want to go or you don't know what you're looking for, but you, you kind of know the area you're going to and you want to kind of browse the area, you have this option right here near, near top, kind of below the search box. So Google Maps uses your location. So it knows that where you're at and it will kind of suggest like nearby things that are nearby you. So right now it knows that I'm kind of near Pacific Heights and it's going to suggest like these options right here. So there's groceries indicated by like a green circle. There's restaurants indicated by like a blue circle. There's like takeout indicated by like a red circle. Hotels indicated by a orange circle. So if you're interested in this, let's say I want a restaurants. I'll use my mouse. I'll click on the restaurant icon right here near top left. And it's gonna uh, appear on my screen like all these options of nearby like restaurants. So for you to know that it's a restaurant, you can see in the middle of your screen right here, there's kind of like these red kind of balloons with like a fork and a spoon in there. And these are kind of indications of these are restaurants nearby. And you could use your mouse, you can hover over each of these balloons, you can see more details about this location. So like for instance, if I go to this icon right here or at this balloon right here, it's gonna indicate like this restaurant right here. And if you look below it, there should be like a, like a small image preview of the location. There should be the name of the location 
And since this is a part of the, the Google uh, platform, they would have ratings as well too. So this has a 4.5 rating. And if you don't know what kind of business that this is, you look below, it says, this is a pizza restaurant. And it gives you like information on how much it's gonna cost you, like $2 signs. And right now it is closed. And it gives you like the time when it's gonna open. So that's kind of how you will kind of, kind of look in the area where you might want to go to, but you don't know what you're looking for. You can kind of browse the area and see what's there. And if you decide you want to go there, you can use Google Maps to get there as well too. And if you want directions, you will locate this icon right here. Let me try to make my screen bigger a little bit. Okay, so I expanded my screen so you have like a better view of what this location is. So once you click on it, on the side right here, you should see more details about the location. And if you want to get like directions, you will locate this icon right here on the left hand side of your screen. It's kind of like a blue circle with like a, like a road sign on it. You'll click on directions. And once you click on that, this kind of page or this kind of side should pop up and it's going to ask you where is your starting point. So it automatically entered in your destination, which is that restaurant right here, your top left hand side of the screen. You just have to choose a starting point. So if you're signed into your account and you enable able your like location, it would know like where you're at. So right now on my screen, I'm, my location is not enabled. So I'm gonna show you how to enable it. So if you look on the right hand side of your screen on the bottom right, you will locate this little icon right here. It looks kind of like a circle with like a like circle inside. It says show your location. So you will click on this. And if it's, this is your first time, it's gonna ask, your browser, do you want to allow Google to know your location? And you should see like a pop-up near the top right here. It says allow or block. I'm gonna click on allow. So right now it should know my location. So you just double cl click on it again and, and it should directly know your location, but it might not be working right now. So I'm gonna manually enter in my starting location. I'll go back to the top left-hand corner right here in, in this box right here. I'll click on here, I'll type in my location. So I'll type in 100 Larkin Street. And once you type it in, there should be like a suggestion like right, right below it. It's gonna kind of predict like what's your location. You could be at 100 Larkin Street, San Francisco, or you could be at 100 Larkin in Madison, Wisconsin. So you just choose from the list. So I'll choose this option right here, the first one. So I have a starting location near top right here. I have uh, any location right here. And if you look below it, there's gonna be all the specific details about the way you're gonna get there by using the Google Maps. But before we look at that, we are looking at the top left-hand corner right here. So you see all these icons right here. So these are like the different uh, options of you selecting within the Google Maps on how you wanna to get to your location. Right now, it is selected as driving, indicated by like a car in a circle. But if you're not driving, you could use the Google Maps to take the bus as well too, or any kind of tr transit form. So you would select this option right here, right next to it. It's kind of, it looks kind of like a bus in a circle. So this is the transit option. If you prefer, you want to like choose like walking directions, you choose the walking option right here, right next to it, indicated by like a person. And if you want to bike, you choose the cycling option, which is right next to it right here. So these are all the various options. If you're trying to select like locations that, that's far away, you might have the flight option right now, right here, but is, is not available right now. Okay, so let's say I want to take, take transit to this location. I'll choose the transit option right here, indicated by like a bus icon right here. And if you look down here, these are all your options. So if you use your mouse and you scroll down, you see all the various options. So it kind of suggests like if you're starting from one location and you want to get there, it will tell you like which buses to take. So you either use this route right here, this route right here, or just this route right here. And you have all these options. And if you want to see more details about a route, you just click anywhere within the route option right here. And it will expand and it will let you know more about your route. So it says, if I leave right now at 1116, I'll get there by 1140. And if I scroll down, it's gonna give me all the specific details. I'm starting right here at the walk, like about three minutes. 
I'll look for this bus right here. And I'll, I'll just follow the directions. I'll get off right here. I'll walk right here and I'll get to my location right here. And that's how you would see like more details about like your route that you, you wanna take. And if you prefer, you could always print out this uh, information as well too. You have the printer icon right here or near the top kind of like right-hand corner right here. Or if you wanna share, you could use the sharing option right here as well. I'm gonna click on that. So the sharing option will let you have uh, like two options. You could send this uh, route as a link. So you, it'll automatically create like this link right here, link to share. You just have to copy this link, copy a link and you could share it with someone. You could text it to someone, the email it to someone, it is up to you. Or you could use this option right here, embed as a map. So if you have like a blog or if, if you have a little, little website, you can use this option as well too. You just, all you have to do is copy this and you could post it onto your, the platform. Okay, so that's how you would get directions. If let's say you were to like take like public transit, I'm gonna go back and, and let's say you don't wanna take public transit, you might want to drive there. So I'm gonna go back to the driving option right here. Right next to it is kind of indicated by like a, like a car near top left hand corner. So this is the driving option. So it already knows my starting location and my ending location. So it's gonna give me all these routes right here, right below it. So there are three su suggested routes. And if you look to the right, this is the actual route in the map right here. So a lot of inf information is right here. So right now it's selected one route and it's kind of highlighted in the blue colors and the orange colors and the red colors. And if I select the other route with my mouse, I'll click on that. It's gonna switch to that route and it's gonna let you know like how long it's gonna take you. Or if I select the third route, it's gonna change to that route as well too. And right next to each of these routes, there's kind of like a small box and it's gonna let you know how long it's gonna take you and how far it's gonna take you. So sometimes routes, it might be quicker, but it might take you like a longer distance. Sometimes it might be slower, but it might take you like a shorter distance. So this is up to you and how you would want to choose which route to take. And while we're looking at the route, uh, notice that on the screen right here, there are different colors. So Google Maps, uh, it has the option of kind of analyzing the traffic conditions along your route. So these colors are indicating like the traffic around your route. The so blue is, is always good. Blue means that there is not much traffic. If it's orange, there is some, some kind of traffic. If it's red, then it's really congested. So this could kind of help you determine which route you want to take. So I'll click on this route right here and you see some red right here in the middle. So there's some orange right here. I'll click on the third option right here. And there is a lot of blue and there is a lot of orange and there is some red as well too. So this is gonna let you know that there is some traffic during this route. So it's up to you if you want to choose it or not. Okay, so that's how you kind of choose driving directions. But for example, if you, let's say you want to, you know you want to go to a certain location, but you know that you want to go to a different location. So you have this option right here. Near the top left-hand corner of your screen, uh, right below all the addresses, there is this option that says add destination. So you could choose like a third place that you want to go to. So you have directions there as well too. So let's say I want to go to, I'm going to go to the Palace of Fine Arts. So I'm going to type in Palace right here. I'll select the Palace of Fine Arts from the list right here. And it added that to my list of uh, places that I want to go to. So it's going to give me directions to all these places. So I'm going to start from 100 Larkin. I'm going to go to 2175 Chestnut. Then afterwards, I'm going to go to the Palace of Fine Arts. And you can add more places as well too. So I'm going to add one more. I'm going to add the zoo. I'll select zoo from the list. So now it knows I want to go to all these three locations. So I'm starting from here on the map. I'm going to go all the way here. And you can see that it's going to give you step-by-step -step directions on how to get to each of these places. So if you're just kind of browsing your screen where all the maps are, there is a lot going on right here. So all these icons are like uh, at different locations. So for example, I'm gonna locate where we're at right now. So right now we are at the main library, the San Francisco Public Library right here. 
So if you want to know more information about each of these locations, you just use your mouse and you hover over each of these names and you can kind of see like, what they are. And this is kind of not like limited to like businesses. So you can find like tourist locations as well too. Like for example, this right here, the Pioneer Monument. If you hover over it, you can see that it's a monument. There's like a rating. And if you want to see more details, you would click on the name right here. And more information should pop up. There should be like an image. There should be like a location right here on the left-hand side. And th there should be like, like open hour. And if you scroll down, there should be like a, like kind of like a section where it says popular times. So Google Maps has like a way of kind of knowing like if a place is like kind of popular or not, they have their own way of, of finding out. And if it's a location that's kind of in the popular, you can see like more photos of the location as well too, which is right here on the left-hand side. You just have to click on each of these images and you would get to see more photos. And certain locations, you might have ratings as well too. So if you scroll down more, there should be like a review summary and you should see all the ratings people have given for like a specific location. So for example, this location, it has like 3.8 and these are like the highlights, great place, loved ice cream. And if you scroll down, you'll read like more details about the reviews as well too. And you see more photos as well. So that's kind of how you see more information about like a specific location. So I'm gonna hit the X. So like there is a lot going on on your map right now. So each location or each kind of business has their own icon. So we are the public library. So we have like a balloon with like a book in it. But if you look to the left right here, you have like a different location, like the War Memorial Opera House. So they have like a balloon with like a music symbol right here. Or if it's a restaurant, you see like a balloon with like a fork in it and, it's, and a knife right here. If it's a school, you see like a balloon with like a hat right here. So if you're not looking very specifically on a map, but you're just looking at the balloons, you can kind of tell like what the location is by like the, the icon. So like right here, there's like a public transit, kind of like a square box, like a, like a bus in it. So you know that this is like a public transit. Next, I'm gonna go over how to like get like actual street views of your locations. So if you go to the bottom right-hand corner of your page, you will locate this bar right here. These are like all your options. And you will look for this little icon right here. He's called the peg man. He kind of looks like an image of like a person like in orange color. So you use your mouse, you hover over this icon right here and you click on it once. Then you drag this icon over and notice that once I'm dragging the peg man over, my screen changed. So all of like the streets are, they're kind of like highlighted in like a blue color. So this is like an indication that if the street or if the location is highlighted, there is a view of this location. So I would move the peg man around and let's say I want to view a street view of this location right here on, Mid on Mission Street. So I'll move the peg man over, I'll drop him like right here. So it's gonna bring me to Mission Street and it's gonna give me the street view of this location. So you could kind of use this to look at a location that you wanna to go to or you're, you're just curious about how this location looks like. And you use your mouse, you can kind of turn around, you can see all the views around here. So that's how you would kind of get the street view of a location. And another way of viewing a street view is if you go to the left-hand side, you should see this option right here. It says street view. If you click on it, you have the option of viewing all the images of this location from like years before. So if Google Maps has an image of this location, uh, let's say like 10 years ago, and it's available, you will view it here as well too. If it's available like five years ago, you will view it here as well. Right now, it's defaulted to the most recent view. So this view is from March 2021. But if I use my mouse, I'll hover over this bar right here. I can move, slide over. I can view this location from, let's say, November 2007. And if I want to view this, I'll select 2007 right here. I use my mouse. I'll click on anywhere in the image right here. And it's going to give me the image of this location from November 2007. So let me choose a different location that's a little bit more uh, dramatic or changed a lot. So let's see. 
So right now I'm browsing my map and I'm kind of expanding. So for you to expand or you want to see more details, there are, are a couple of options. You could go to the plus sign or minus sign right here in the bottom right hand corner. You could zoom in or zoom out. Or if you have a mouse with like a scrolling wheel, you could use that as well and you can scroll in or scroll out. So I'm going to show you how the street view looks like on 8th and Market Street right here. So I'm, I'm going to go to the icon right here and I'm going to go look for the peg man and I'll drag him over right here and I'm going to drop him right here. Okay, so this is an image of Market Street and 8th Street. So this street view, it is from March 2021. So I'm gonna go back to, uh, let's say 2013, which is right here. Let's say right here, uh, November 2013. So I'll click on here. And you can see this was an image of November 2013. There's no building here, but right now there is a building. So this is a good way of kind of viewing locations to see if it has changed like dramatically over the years or not. And this is dependent on if Google Maps has an image of the location as well, because Google Maps might not have an image of this location like 10 years ago. It depends on how often they update their database on a certain location or not. So I'm gonna hit X and I'm gonna go back. Okay, so that's how you would view like the street view of like a location. So for certain locations, you might have like a panoramic view of the inside as well too. So this option is available, but it is not kind of maintained by Google Maps. So it's dependent on like users like you and me. So let's say if you go to like a location and you have Google Maps on your device and you want to take like a panoramic view of the inside, you can do that as well too. And you can add that to the Google Maps platform. And you could see the difference. So I'm going to use the pigment right here. I'm going to click on him and I'll move him over. And notice that I mentioned earlier, these are like the street views of the locations that have like street view available. But notice that on your screen right here, do you see like there are little circles around certain locations? So these circles are like an indication that there is a panoramic view available. And these are kind of contributed by like users like you and me. So let's say I want to view this panoramic view right here, the circle right here. I'll move the pigment over. I'll drop him right in the middle. So it's going to bring me into the public library. So this image is kind of like a 360 view that like a user like contributed. So you can see like the inside of the location. So you would use this if you want to see more details about the location inside because Google Maps might not have like an image inside. So it's dependent on users like you and me. I'm going to hit back. I'm going to choose one more right here. Let's see. Okay, so this is kind of like a panoramic view of the outside. And you could go to the top left-hand corner, you can see when was this view taken. So it was taken uh, on January, 2014. So sometimes it might not be updated. And let me choose one more location. So I'm gonna choose something in the Asian Art Museum. So I'm going back here. And let's see. Okay, so I dropped the, the pigment into the panoramic view option. So this is an image of inside the Asian Art Museum. And this was taken by someone and they contributed this to Google Maps. So this is a good way of kind of viewing a, a location if you want to visit there or you're interested, in, then you can kind of see what it, it looks like. Okay, so that's how you view like panoramic uh, views of like certain locations. So I'm going to zoom out. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to go over is, let's say you want to know like uh, the distance between two locations. So you could kind of view it on your screen right here, but it's kind of hard to tell like how many feet it is. So you have the option. So if you use your mouse, you right click anywhere in the map. So let's say right here, when you right click, you have all these options right here. So I'm gonna go over this option right here, measure distance. 
So I'm going to click on measure distance near the bottom right here. Then I'm going to select another location. So I'm going to select here. I'll click right click right here. And let's see. I'm going to select distance to here. So I will click on that. So that's uh, kind of like a tool where you can kind of measure how how like far you are from like a certain location. So if I'm starting right here, go right here, that's like 1,329 feet. And you can always kind of drag it and expand more of it as well too. So that's how you would kind of measure a distance. So I'm going to right click here as well too. So we went over measure distance. So you can see there are a lot of other options here as well too. So let's say you want to kind of know what's at a certain location. So you can just drag your mouse, you right click, let's say, I'm gonna choose somewhere downtown. So let's say I'm gonna choose the ferry building right here. So I'm gonna right click right here and I'm gonna select this option right here, what's here. So if I click on that, it's gonna let you know what's at that actual location. So you, you use this if you want, want to kind of explore like certain locations or if you want to search like nearby. So if you want to know that there's a favorite building here, but you want to know what's nearby this location, you'll right click and you go search nearby. It's going to activate this option right here on the left hand side, which is very similar to what I went over earlier. It knows that it's the ferry plaza and you can locate like certain places nearby, like grocery, like restaurants or takeout or hotels. Also like restaurants, And it's going to give you the list right here of all the nearby locations. Okay, so that's how you use that option. So next, I'm going to go over how Google Maps looks like on, like, let's say, a smartphone or a tablet. Okay, so on your screen right now, you should be seeing uh, like an image of my phone. So I'm on an Android device right now. So I'm going to locate my Google Maps right here. So like I mentioned earlier, if you want to use Google Maps on like your smartphone or tablet, it, you could download the app to your device. So it really depends on, on what device you have. So if you have like an Android device, then you would go to the Google Play Store, which is right here near like the bottom. So it, it really depends on where the icon is on your device, but you would locate the Google Play Store and you would type in uh, Google Maps and you should be able to download it. But if it's an Android device, most likely you already have the Google Maps and icon should look like the icon right here, the second icon. It's kind of like a, like a balloon with like a rainbow colors in it. But if you have like an iPhone or iPad, you can use Google Maps as well too. You would just have to go to the Apple App Store and you type in Google Maps and you would download the app to your device. And that's how you would get that onto your device and you could use that on your device. So I'm gonna click on Google Maps right now. And right now on your screen, you should be seeing uh, what it looks like in Google Maps while you're on your device. So it's it's going to look very similar to like the online platform, like on a website. So you have your maps right here and you should locate uh, your location icon, which is on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. It kind of looks like a circle with like lines on, around it. So you will click on that. And it's going to bring you to your location. So in the middle of your screen right here, you should be seeing like a, like a bluish circle. It should be kind of like a kind of blinking a little bit. So this is an indication of your location. So it knows that you're, you're right here because it's using your device's location. So it knows that I'm at Grove Street. So let me try to expand this a little bit. Okay, so that should be a better view. So. I was talking about like the circle, like in the middle. So this is your location. So Google Maps knows that you're right here. So it's gonna use this as like a starting point of where you wanna to go to. And if you look at the top of your screen right here, you should see like a search box. So it says search here near the top and there's like a balloon with like um, rainbow colors. You can tap on that location right there and you can enter in any address you want. So if you wanna to go to like a certain location, you wanna to go to like a certain business, you type in the name right there. So if I type in zoo, it's gonna give me a suggestion on uh, which zoo I wanna to go to. 
So I, I might want to go to the first location right here. It says Zoo San Francisco. And notice that on the left-hand side of the name, it's, it's giving me like a how far it is. So it's 5.7 miles from my current location. So if I want to go here, I'll tap on the name. And it's going to bring me to that location on the screen right here. So it's going to let you know like what this location is. And Google Maps, it, it is free. So you would see some ads. And right here, you see like ad right here, buy your tickets. So if you scroll up, you use your finger and scroll up, you see more details about the location. So this is going to look very similar to what you've seen earlier on like your browser. You have like a directions option, you have the call option, you have save option. So if you scroll up, you can see more details like the address, the business location information, their website if they have one, and you can see the reviews that people have given to this location. And if you keep scrolling, you see more information. You see photos, if there's like a lot of photos at this location as well. And you can see like the popular times and you see like nearby transit here as well too. So, so th this view is very similar to what you've seen on, let's say if you access Google Maps on like a, like a PC. So I'm gonna try to get directions. So the directions option is right here on the left-hand side. It's indicated by like a blue circle and like a, like a driving sign. I'll tap on that with my finger. And once I tap on that, it's gonna activate this screen right here. So near the top of your screen right here, it says your location. So it knows that you are at a certain location. So it's gonna use that as a starting point and it already selected San Francisco Zoo as an ending point. So be careful about using this because sometimes your GPS or the location of your device, is not very accurate. So you might be at a certain location, but it might say that you're at like, like a location that's two blocks away or three, three blocks away. So you should pay attention to that. If you're worried about that, you can manually type in your location as well too. You use your finger, you would tap anywhere on the top of your screen that says your location. And once you tap on that, this screen should pop up and you should be able to use your keyboard on your device and you type in your actual location. So give me a second. So let's say I'll type in 200 Larkin Street. And once I'm typing it in, there's gonna be a suggestion like right below it. So I'm gonna tap on that. And it's gonna show on your screen right now, a starting location and a ending location. So right now you should see on your screen like a little map and sometimes the keyboard might still be appearing on your screen. So you locate the back button on your device. So it really depends on what kind of device you have. It might be like a physical button on the bottom. It might be like a button like in your screen. So you locate the back button and you tap, tap that and it should kind of clear off like the keyboard screen. Okay, so that should be cleared off. So now it says, I want to start at 200 Larkin Street and I'm going to San Francisco Zoo. And on your screen, it's going to give me like a preview about how the route is going to look like. So I have a, a couple options, 25 minutes, 22 minutes, or 20 minutes. This option is for driving. So let's say you don't drive or you don't want to drive and you want to take the public transit. So you select the public transit option right next to it. So it, it kind of looks like an icon with like a bus or like a trolley. So you tap on that. And it's, it says it's 41 minutes. So right now, uh, the transit option is selected and it's kind of finding the best route. So right now, the search results are, these are the best routes. And you can scroll down, you can see what are your options. So you could take the K, you could take Lyft, you could take the bus, you could take um, the 29. So these are all your options. Or let's say you wanna walk. So you have the walking option right next to, indicated by like a person right here. I'll select that. And it's gonna take you two hours and 21 minutes to walk there. So I'm gonna go back to the transit option right here. Okay, so these are the options. So let's say you decide 
on which one you want to take. So you could select the icon right here near one of these options. So if you look at on your screen right here, it says uh, L bus. It's kind of indicated by like a purple square box. If, if you look to the right of that, you see words that says 44 minutes. And right below 44 minutes, there is an icon that looks like a triangle. You would tap on that. That's kind of like the starting icon. Okay, so once you tap on the starting icon, it activated like the option of like you choosing this route. So you could have directions right here. So you start off at 200 Larkin, you walk three minutes, you look for the bus here, mark it and hide. And you just follow the directions on your phone or tablet. And it will let you know that once you're on like the bus, you ride 29 stops. And if you want to see those stops, you locate the word that says 29 stop, right 29 stops. There should be a half triangle pointing down. You would tap on that with your finger. And it should expand that so you can see like each route, each bus stop that you're going to go by. Okay, so that's how you would kind of follow the directions. And once you're done, you just follow it until you get to your location. So I'm gonna hit X on the bottom left-hand corner to exit out, out of this. And it's gonna bring me back to my screen right here. So now I'll hit the back button again. Okay, so we're back to the screen right here. So this kind of gives you like directions on which bus to take or which route you want to take. But it's, uh, it's right now, it's kind of dependent on the current time. So let's say you want to go at a different time. So you will locate this option right here. It should be near the middle of your screen on the left-hand side. It says depart at 11.41 a.m. So if you tap on that, it should give you the option of say depart at a certain time. So you might leave like a, at a later time. You could choose, let's say, depart at 1.41 p.m. And you, after you select that, you hit set, which is on the bottom right -hand corner of your screen. Or let's say you wanna be at a location by a certain time. So you locate the arrive by option near the top middle of your screen right here. Once you select arrive by, you should select the time. So let's say I wanna arrive at this location by 3.41 p.m. So once I select that time, I'll hit the set option, which is on the bottom right-hand corner. So it's gonna search the routes and it's gonna show like the best route to take at what time to take. So you, you will get there by that time you, you want. So like, for example, it says, I should leave at 2.46. I'll get there by 3.36, which leaves me a couple of minutes of uh, arriving by 3.41. So that's how you would kind of select the option of kind of arriving by a certain time or leaving at a certain time. But let's say you're driving. So I'm gonna go back to the driving option, which is near the top middle of on the left-hand side. So now I've selected the, the driving option. So the driving option is, is right here. So it knows where I'm starting, it knows where I'm going. And on the bottom left-hand side of your screen, you should see a start button, which is kind of indicated by like a triangle. So if I click on the start button right here, it's gonna start my route. And it's gonna give me turn by turn directions on where to go. And, and normally you, you see this like in a car, if someone's like driving, you see like uh, their screen and it'll give you like turn by turn directions. So right now it knows that I'm on Larkin Street and it's telling me to go straight. So you just follow the directions on your screen. And there is like an audio option. So it's gonna tell you turn left on Larkin Street or go straight. So that's how you can activate the driving option here as well too. Okay, so that's how you would kind of select the location. You wanna to, want to go to the location and you get turn by turn directions if you're driving or if you're taking like public transit. And on the bottom of your screen right here, it's going to let you know that it's going to take me 21 minutes. And it's going to be 12 miles. And I'll get there by 12.07 today. And on the right-hand side of the bottom of the screen, 
you should see there should be an icon like a circle. And there's like two arrows pointing up. If you click on that, it should bring you to this screen right here. So it should give you like a like an overall picture of your route, but then it's gonna give you a picture of the other options as well too. So if you wanna go to like a different route, it's gonna let you know that you're going gonna go like a different direction. It, it might be slower or it might be quicker. So for the screen option right here, it's saying if I go a different route, it's gonna be slower, but I'll select that as an option. I'll tap on, let's say five minutes slower and it's gonna change my route. So after when it changes your route, you would hit recenter, which is on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. It's kind of like a triangle. And it's going to recenter your map so you have a, a better view with your new route. And that's how you would kind of get information on where you want to go, like for driving directions. And I'm going to hit the X. So I'm going to go back. So next, I'm going to go over the offline maps option. So this is very helpful if you have a device, but you don't have like a, like a data plan. So you wouldn't be able to use Google Maps, but there is an offline maps option where you could select a map and you connect to Wi-Fi and you could download the maps onto your device first. And once you download the map, you could use that and you could use that to get directions. So you do lose some uh, functions. So since it is not like uh, accessing like your data, it's not accessing the internet, it's not giving you live tra like traffic information, but you can still get like a detailed, like turn by turn directions as well too. You would do this if you don't have like a data plan or uh, let's say you have like old phones that are still usable, but you don't have like a plan for it. You can always download uh, Google maps on there through Wi-Fi and you could download offline maps and you could use that device as like a um, GPS without like a data plan. So for you to do that, you would go into Google Maps right here. You will locate the circle option, which is near the top right-hand corner of your screen. So usually it's like the first initial of your first name. So my name is Michael. So my first initial is M and it's kind of indicated by a circle that looks kind of like a orange color. I'll tap on that. And once I tap on that, kind of like a screen should pop up with all the options and you can scroll down and you will locate the offline maps option, which is kind of near the middle of your screen right here. It kind of looks like a cloud with like a line cut through it. So you tap on offline maps. So once you do that, you should see a screen that looks like this. So you have a couple of options. So you could select, select your own map, which is near the top of your screen right here. You'll tap on that. And once you tap on that, you should see the screen right here. So whatever is in the square box in view is gonna download the map of this location right here. So you, you use your finger and you can move to a location where you wanna download the map of. So let's say I wanna download a map. Let's say I wanna download a map of this area right here. So once I select uh, this area, there is a download button on the bottom right-hand corner. So it really depends on which device you're, you have. Sometimes the button might be on the left side. Sometimes the button might be on the right side. So you should look for the download button. And if you're happy, you hit download. And notice that there is a message on the near bottom. It says download will use up 40 megabytes of your free space. So since you're downloading maps, you would need to have free space on your device. And, you, and usually if the map is bigger, it will take up more space. So you really need to have space on your device. Now hit download and it's gonna download the maps right here. So these maps do need to get updated um, often, but not that often. So there, there should be like a date right below the map that says you need to update by a certain time before it's expired. And I do have an example right here. So on your screen right here, it says map five, it says expired. So this map is expired, so I can't use it. So I have to connect to Wi-Fi and update it before I can use it. And that's how you would download offline maps onto your device. And you could use this if you wanna go somewhere and you, you don't have like a data plan. So that's pretty much my presentation on Google Maps.